Yo, 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 you guys, how are you doing? It's That Cartoon is back once again with another movie review. That's right, the movie I'll be reviewing today is Vixen, the movie. It was actually a web series at one point, believe it or not. Created from the executive producers who actually produced, you know, the Arrow series, Supergirl, The Flash, all those series. So we're gonna just jump right into it, okay? Vixen, AKA Moira McCabe, is one of DC's, you know, more known heroes, one of their stronger heroes. Her ability is able to grab the abilities of any animal, you know, she can think of, thanks to the power of her totem that she has and she always wears. Throughout the comics, you know, she's been in, her powers have changed up quite a bit, you know. From time to time, she'll get to grab the powers of alien animals sometimes, and even from time to time, been able to draw the powers of actual superheroes. But overall, people know her from actually being able to summon the abilities of animals. We'll go over the characters that are in the series, in this movie, as well as characters that, you know, play different roles and whatnot. We're just gonna go like a smooth overview of the story. The superheroes that are gonna be in the story are gonna be Cisco, also known as Vibe, The Flash, Green Arrow, Black Canary, Adam, Firestorm, and of course Vixen. I'm pretty sure that's all of them, right? Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's that's literally and the Adam. That's the Adam. I'm not sure if it's the Adam or not. Hmm. Oh well. Then the villains are gonna be Mari's sister, and then Benatu. Benatu issue. And you know, Professor McAllister who ends up becoming a good guy at the end. So we're gonna just jump right into it. The story starts with Mari actually in jail, and you see that she wants to be a fashion designer, and she ends up getting bailed by her adopted father, Chuck. As the series continues, as the movie continues, you see that Mari is just kind of troubled. She's just trying to figure out her way in life. She doesn't really know where exactly she fits in. After having grabbed his stepdaughter, Chuck and, Ma and Mari end up going home, but end up almost getting robbed. But Mari's totem ends up activating and stops them, stops the villain from taking anything. However, they were specifically asking for the totem. Nothing else, just the totem. That's just a foreshadowing. Mari ends up stopping them thanks to her animal abilities. In the movie, you see that the totem has great power. In the comics, at least, the totem actually comes from the power of the red, or whatever they call it. And it's the same ability, it's the same power that um, Beast Boy can draw from, and the same power that Animal Man can draw from. Respectively, you have the green, which is power that Poison Ivy can draw from. They're all supposed to work together. So, just a little backstory on that. However, the power that they have comes from the god Anansi. We'll get more into that as we continue. This little incident caught the attention of Green Arrow and The Flash. So they end up paying Mari a visit. Mari is not having that. She tries to escape using every animal ability that she has in the book. In fact, The Flash um, is trying to chase her at one point, and I'm almost like, okay, The Flash is easily gonna catch her. I mean, you know, she can only go as fast as a cheetah. The Flash has the speed force. Woo! So Mari ends up using her her ability of the elephant to kind of smack him back and I was like, okay, you're getting the hang of this. The fight scene was really good, well, the, not fight scene, the chasing was really good. You end up seeing Mari use quite a few animal abilities and almost fly, but then get scared and then end up getting the power to fly anyway. That was really cool. And you see that they're not really there to stop her, they're, they're there to kind of help her figure out where her abilities lie only to find out she's not a metahuman it, that's literally next to the totem. In the series, you see Mari end up going seeking the help of Professor Malacaster. Now, Malacaster is working with Mari's evil sister, Colossa. Yeah, that's right. And Mari doesn't know this, and, and Professor Malacaster just wants to make sure that Mari's okay, but he also needs her to lose the totem so that he can get money for his expedition. He, she ends up coming to see him a couple times and I think that second time, he ends up betraying her. Mari's sister Kawasa comes in and is like, hey, look, I'm gonna need that totem from you, like now. 
And Mari actually was going to give it up, but the totem actually stuck to her neck. So long story short, Mari ends up getting shot and somehow finds herself in Africa. Kuwasa kidnaps her sister and brings her to Africa. In fact, this is where you learn that they are related. You, you in fact learn that the village that they're from in Africa, Zambezi, was destroyed by an evil group. We don't know the name of this group right yet. We don't know who who are leading this group at all actually either. We'll find out later. But we learned that you know Zambezi was actually a nice little place and the totem was supposed to be the birthright of Kuwasa. However, because of this incident, everything got separated, too much happened, and somehow Mari ended up with it. The mother tried to run away and tried to save um, Mari in only Mari, according to her sister, however, that is not true. And the evil faction ended up killing their father. So we see that we have a, a, a sister that is just like not here for any of it. She just wants to, um, quote unquote, receive her birthright and live the rest of her life. There's no real way to separate the tie. So what the sister ends up doing is having Mari get bit by a spider and says, this is the way to sever the link. Mari ends up getting away and tries to run away and Kawasa's just like, you know what, she's not gonna get very far, let, just, just let her run. Mari tried her best, but the poison ended up getting to her and she ended up getting knocked out. She ends up getting the totem stolen from her and now Kawasa has a totem. you think it'd be over then, but it's not. The whole animal, well, the animal kingdom basically walked up to Mari and was like, hey yo, look, we need you to wake up right now, take the totem back from your sister, She's a pretender. She's not the real deal. That is your totem, not hers. And it basically explains that we were, you know, the totem, you know, in her hands would have been evil. In fact, you know, it's it's a good thing that the totem was brought away from the sister, meaning it was never her birthright to begin with. The totem itself was a gift from the trickster god Anansi, which is who the Zambezi people actually worshipped and everything. And because of their reverence to him, he gave them a way to sort of, you know, be connected with him to a degree which I thought was really nice. So what you have now is Mari trying to go back to the village and actually stop her evil sister. It was a nice fight. You see Mari actually not relying on her animal abilities, but really relying on her wits. And she ends up getting the totem back, which is really, really nice. She gets the totem back and goes back, goes back home, looks for Professor Malcaster, the person who betrayed her, and is like, look, if he's in, because he, he wasn't there, he's on expedition, um, he told us, he, she told the assistant, hey look, when he comes back, we're gonna have a word. We're gonna have words, plural. Someone's like, oh buddy, you done messed up now. After that, it moves on to the next part of the series where Mari is trying to get a better control over her abilities, but is having issues. Her father, her stepfather, Chuck, ends up telling her, hey look, I have a friend that you should look up. She works with animals. Go ahead, check it out. You find out they have a little, uh, Mari's father and this professor have like a little thing going on. You know, Mari goes to see this professor, and the professor she is you know just trying to you know make sure that um her her zoo is intact and everything you know so people can come learn. She ends up helping out Mari after Mari um explains the situation truly explains the situation, and they kind of see that you know Mari has abilities, and you kind of learn what's really going on. This the zoo is being swindled um, in the into holding things, but the the um, zookeeper person, she is trying to save the animals that these smugglers bring in. So together they work together and Mari ends up learning that she doesn't need to just, you know, use the totem. The totem needs to be let free as she uses the animals. Um, and it kind of helps her draw her powers a lot better so it's not just confining one animal spirit to one thing like, oh, you know, I need you to jump. No, like she let the animal, hey, look, we're gonna follow your lead. We're gonna, we're gonna dance together. We'll work together. It was really nice to kind of see that. So, you know, she's not fighting the totem anymore. She's kind of just doing what comes naturally to her and the totem, making her a, a better hero for that. So that was really cool to see. Mari's actually pretty good at this and she ends up helping the other characters in, you know, the respective universe. The Arrow universe and even the Flash universe. It's really cool to see. You even get to see um, Firestorm in this, a few of the fights too, which I thought was really cool. She ends up getting knocked out, which is kind of, it's like, oh, all right, well, you know, I, 
Gotta move the plot, gotta move the plot, that's fine. So in the next area, the next um, section of this, you learn that um, there are more totems. That threw me for a loop. I'm like, I only assumed I only thought there was one totem. Apparently there are more totems. It's kind of like, hmm, I'm gonna describe it. The Planeteers to a good degree? Yeah, hear me out. The powers they have, one is fire, one is earth, one is wind, one is water, and one is spirit, heart. Which I thought was pretty cool. I'm like, oh wow, okay, I see what you're doing, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. After coming back from the expedition, Professor Malacaster has discovered another one of these totems. He brings back the fire totem of all totems. What ends up happening is that same night that they have it, it ends up getting stolen and this character named Benatu Eshin ends up getting the totem, killing the person who brought him the totem in the first place and basically trying to look for the other, well not really look for the totems but just kind of like run the city and kind of do his own thing only to find out that Vixen has the other totem and he's like oh snap you have another totem, run it. Vixen ends up eluding him using her wits and using her totem, so he ends up walking away thinking that she's dead. You find out later that Vixen ends up enlisting the help of Professor Malacaster and a few of the other heroes in order to stop the person who destroyed her village. You learn this after she encounters her sister again. Her sister is weak and her sister, you know, they work together with her sister. Her sister actually informs them there is another totem in the city, which is crazy kind of luck. The totem that they're looking for now is the water totem. The water totem, theoretically, should be able to keep the fire totem in check, right? Right? They end up going into a mansion where the, where the totem is. There's nobody there. The two work together to find the totem. And of course, you know, Kawasa ends up trying to portray her sister. But Mari's prepared this time. It has, you know, Adam and Black Canary ready to help, you know, just case her sister tries to get out of check. Because she's going to help them fight, you know, Banatu Eshin. And yeah, no, you're going to help fight. Ain't no way, ain't no way around it this time. So it's pretty cool to see that. So they come up with a plan as to try to try to stop him. And Professor Malcaster is trying to find um, some of the ancient scripts or whatever to try to stop and try to destroy that particular totem. So the fight scene is really, really unique and it's really, really cool. I enjoyed it thoroughly, actually. The fight scene was just very action-packed. You see other characters just trying to stop this guy. and It is not working, but they're trying. And, you know, Mari's doing her thing. She's doing the best she can. And, you know, she ends up bringing her sister in and the two work together to try to knock him down. But the fight ends up becoming more between um, Kuwasa and Benatu Esh. That fight was very intense because I started to empathize with Mari's sister. Kuwasa kind of explained that, you know, this is the man that did all this. And we already knew that, but it's just the way she said it. She, she, she explained the hurt. She explained, you know, I'm not walking away from this fight like my mother walked away from the fight years ago. And it was really kind of cool to see. However, the water totem is not all that strong. The water totem is not holding a candle. Sorry for the joke. Not holding a candle to the fire totem. The fire totem is just so full of fire and so full of power. It's just, it's not working. Maybe if they had brought this, this plant over to like an ocean of some sort, uh, you know, Kuwasa would have had a better chance, but she ends up getting obliterated in the fire. And so does her totem. Just utterly destroyed. So now it's just Vixen and the other characters that are helping her fight. So she's doing the best that she can do. You know, Vixen is doing her thing. She's holding her own. And she's not worried about anything else except just defeating him. So they end up bringing the fight over to the ocean. And you start to see that, you know, Benatsu can't really handle water, finally. Um, and she ends up getting the totem away from him and they end up, you know, thinking he's dead. He comes, of course, they never did the first time. He grabs her back in the water and she ends up knocking him back this time, this time for good. And he's, he's, he's done, donezo. So you end up seeing Professor Malacaster talking to Vixen and he's like, look, in order to destroy this totem, you have to use the full power of your amulet. So she summons an elephant trying to crush the um, the totem. It doesn't work. It dawns on her that she needs to summon every single animal that she can. 
she summons a whole mess of animals. It's really, the sequences are so neat. So she summons all these animals and they do one super duper stomp, H house stomp for them one time. <laughs> yeah. She ends up doing that and destroying the amulet and that was really cool. And then of course we have the epilogue where you see that you know she has a little thing with Professor Malacaster. The other heroes that assisted her in the fight are kind of there at this little soiree they're doing. And you even get a, a um a mini mini epilogue where you see that she's you know she has longer hair this time her hair isn't short like it used to be and she's just kind of fighting crime on her own it was really kind of cool to see so you know she has a really help from the arrow actually in iran and they just kind of talk you know and you see that she really is a part of the arrow slash flash universe so it was really cool to see overall i really enjoyed this movie the action sequences were nice. Um, the animation, of course, with DC animation, it's always top notch. Always top notch. I enjoyed it. Hey, you guys, thanks for watching the video. If you liked what you saw, go ahead and hit me with a like, comment, and subscribe. Tell your friends about it, share it on Facebook. My social media, the name for that is what you see to get here that cartoonist. Instagram, that cartoonist. Snapchat, that cartoonist. Go ahead and find me on social media, guys. Take care. Bye bye.